Peace. So the other day I was building with a few brothers about our understanding degree or understanding lesson in the one to 40s, which asks us the question, what is the diameter of the planet Earth? And one of the things that I've noticed just through my years of having knowledge of self is when some of us get to those particular lessons and then other lessons in our actual facts like Mount Everest is 29,141 feet high. Deserts cover 14 million square miles. Pacific Ocean, 68,634,000 square miles. Even at the solar facts, like the Mars is 142 million miles away from the sun. Uh, Jupiter is 483 million miles away from the sun. People oftentimes don't know how to use those lessons. And they kind of treat it like, hey, those are just fun facts about, about the universe and the planet and shit, you know? And... <laughs> you know, it's like considering that we oftentimes don't extract the practical lesson of how we can use that in our everyday life. And when it comes to the diameter of the planet Earth being 7,926 miles, sometimes people just add those numbers up and they say, well, you know, the diameter of the planet Earth is God born wisdom equality because, you know, in order to know the diameter of the Earth, you know, you God got to born the wisdom of his equality because that born wisdom culture was born equality. And wisdom culture is the letter X in the alphabet. And that wisdom's culture ain't known. That's unknown to her. That's why God got a born wisdom of equality. And that's true showing forth his, his equality. And, and it comes across as like this weird abstract monologue that, you know, sometimes I think people don't even understand. It just sounds like cryptic or whatever. But I wanted to take a moment to just share a very practical example of how to utilize like a lesson such as that. And then to hopefully inspire, empower, and educate others to start considering some of these other lessons in that regard. So that we can start striving to extract what is a practical lesson in this. You know, it ain't just about adding the numbers up or something like that. Or, But what is? how can we practically use this every day? Well, when you think about diameter, right, in mathematics, diameter is the straight line that's drawn from one side to the other side of a circle, right? And if you're looking at that visually, imagine the equator, right? The equator can be considered the diameter because it's it's an, an imaginary line that's drawn from one side to the other side, right? And... When you are drawing that straight line or you are measuring the diameter, what it does is it exposes both hemispheres or sides of that circle or sphere. Just like if you look at the equator, you see the northern and the southern hemisphere, right? Um, in communication, look at that straight line as a line of communication, right? And... One of the videos that I shared like months, maybe a year or so ago, is I talked about dichotomous thinking and how oftentimes people just think in duality. They just think one side or the other. It's not often that they consider the whole perspective or they can see in a circumspect type of way, you know, all of the different perspectives that make up that entire subject or topic. They usually just one side or the other. You know, and you see it oftentimes when you ask people like, what do you think about, you know, children? Usually people is going to be on one side or the other. They're going to be like, oh, no, nah, I can't stand kids. Mm -mm, no, nah, these kids today, this, that, 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 blah, 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 blah. And they're going to go on and on and on and on and on and on. Depending upon how long they go on, <laughs> you're going to see how extreme they are on that topic. Same thing with somebody that may share the other perspective and say, oh, man, I love children. And, you know, we got to do this, that, and the third, and blah, 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 blah. The more they go on and on, you can see how extreme they are on that topic as well. It's not often that you see a person that has a very moderate or neutral view on a topic like that. Where if you ask them, what do you think about children? They're going to show you both sides and say, you know, man, I love children. You know, children are our our greatest natural resource they're important you know they are evidence of a potential future we got to make sure we do this that and the third and at the same time we got a lot of rough children out there you know and i think that if a person isn't prepared to actually bring children onto this planet that you know they should really think about or consider 
you know, not engage in a certain type of activity where they're bringing children into this world and they're not willing and able to be able to rear them. You know what I'm saying? And so they're, they're very understanding in terms of seeing both sides of that perspective. And it's not often that you have that type of conversation with a person, but what it shows is they have the ability to recognize the diameter of that subject or that cipher because they can show you both sides. Most of the time, people are extreme. They see it one side, one way, or the other way. Depending upon how far they go into that, it shows you how far they are. So going back to what I said about visualizing this as the equator, look at that as a person living closer to equatorial, you know, the equatorial part of the planet, as opposed to people living in some of these extreme places that's very far away from the equator. When you're having a conversation with somebody, the lines of communication that you that you have with them is going to expose where they are in terms of the hemisphere of that conversation, where they are in terms of perspective when it comes to are they kind of extreme on this side or extreme on that side. And in the political arena, they talk it. They talk about it like they're a leftist or, you know, they're a part of the right. That's what they're talking about. And based upon that subject or that topic, you can see where a person is. Now, when you are able to measure the diameter of, of a circle or, or a sphere, you're also able to determine the circumference of that sphere or that cipher or that, that circle. Meaning, when a person's sharing their perspective with you and you see where they're at, you can tell the circumference of their thinking. <laughs> you can tell where their limits are. When it comes to what they're able to consider and what they're not able to consider. So going back to what I said about the equator, if a person has very extreme ideas about certain things, that's like a person living down in Antarctica somewhere. So if a person lives there or if a person has a perspective that that is it's that extreme when it comes to that topic, then it's going to be highly unlikely for you to be able to get them to think about the other extreme. Or the other perspective that is on a total opposite hemisphere of their brain. Or the total opposite hemisphere of that conversation. That's almost like getting a person that lives in that type of environment to consider the equator. And everything that's going on there. And you know, to get them closer to a perspective that gives them a more of a sense of balance. When it comes to dealing with topics like that. Communicating with people, I think sometimes we go into conversations thinking that we're going to win people over and get them to consider like the total opposite perspective of where they're standing. And that's not likely. So one of the ways that I use this degree in terms of measuring the diameter of planet Earth is through lines of communication, you can draw perspective in terms of where a person is at. Because a lot of times people think dichotomously. They're either going to be leaning on this side or they're going to be leaning on that side. If they're leaning on that side, now you have data or you have evidence to strive to communicate with them some perspective to get them a little bit closer to that straight line or to that diameter. If they're extreme, you know how to handle them as well. The goal, like it says, 7,926 miles, the goal is is to be able to manifest equality because 7,926 comes up to 24 and then that comes down to six. That's equality. The goal is to strive to show a person the fairest or the most equal perspective when it comes to that particular topic. That is the real goal. Not to just let a person be real lopsided and extreme in their views about various different things, but when you start having a conversation, you get a sense of where they're at. The same exact way when you determine what the diameter of a circle or a sphere is, you can also use that as a way of measuring the circumference of that sphere and knowing what is the, the limits or the boundaries of how they think about that topic or that subject as a whole. So... I will this was inspiring, it was empowering, it was educational, and just gave those of you a little bit of perspective on how to practically use a lesson such as that when it comes to measuring the diameter of the planet Earth. You know, in addition to that, the, the planet Earth 
is grown and made from the beginning. That's one of the things that we learned in one of our other lessons. So that being a terrestrial sphere, our physical body is evidence of the planet Earth. You know, so the same way that this planet is a living organism and it's grown and made from the beginning, a human being is grown and made from the beginning as well. So even though we may not be a sphere in terms of what we physically look like in terms of our shape, we still have a sphere in terms of the way in which we think. And we also have two hemispheres of our brain. And sometimes people may be a little bit more right hemispheric or they may be a little left hemispheric. And by engaging people, you can determine, OK, how can I share with them some perspective or introduce them to different activities or to engage them in certain things in order to help bring some balance or homeostasis to the way in which they lean? And one of the reasons why we see a lot of the division in this society and extremism in this, in this society is because a lot of people are dealing with various different imbalances. It can be cultural imbalances. It can be biochemical imbalances. It can be psychological imbalances. Something that shows you that a person has not been able to properly measure the diameter of their planet. And those of us who know this, it's really our responsibility to help bring some homeostasis, balance, fairness, equity, equality to the lives of people who are open to that. And one of the ways that you are able to discover that is just the lines of communication. So I will. This was peace. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Peace.